Hello and welcome to The Print. This is Faria Iftikhar and today we are joined by the Director in Charge of IIT Madras Campus in Zanzibar, Professor Preeti Agalev. We are here to discuss the progress of the institute, which is the first Indian institute to set up a campus abroad in detail with her and also what are the plans for its future. Welcome to The Print, ma'am. Thank you so much for having me. Happy to be here. Same here. Uh, first of all, I would like to know about the journey so far. It was a big leap to start a campus abroad and of an institution which is like one of the top most in the world, I should say, not just in India. So how has been the journey so far? It has been a very positive uh, journey. It's a uh, little over a year and a half right now. Uh, we are in the middle of our fourth semester of uh, course delivery. And of course, there are many challenges, but we have so much of learning. And uh, every day feels like, you know, this is an opportunity that has been given to us um, to do something very different, to do something very meaningful um, so we're very grateful overall um, for, for all the support we're getting from all quarters. And the journey so far has been uh, positive and, and we, we look forward also with a lot of hope um, is what I would say. And ma'am, how has been the support from the Zanzibar government as of now? Like what kind of support the Institute is getting along with Indian government, of course, that is there. Sure. Uh, so the current campus that we are in is a transit facility of about uh, five acres that the government of Zanzibar allotted us. Uh, there were already classrooms and uh, hostel rooms over here, but we wanted them to be uh, fitted out uh, in, in a way that would work better for us. So all the interior furniture, smart boards, all of our classrooms have facial entry um, wow. uh, uh, enabled and we have a very nice auditorium of 100% capacity um, a dining hall again that can seat around 100 students uh, and a small dispensary a very basic one all of this has been set up by the government of Zanzibar in addition they've allotted us uh, 200 acres of land and they are we are working together in developing that into a permanent campus because the good news is that we are already bursting out of uh, this space and uh, I think in the very near uh, future we won't have enough room for our all the things that we have planned for uh, IITM Zanzibar in this facility. So we will be moving there uh, partially in the near future and maybe fully uh, going forward. We'll retain this space for student innovation activities. All of these are enabled by the government of Zanzibar uh, from the Ministry of um, Education and Vocational Training. They work closely with us um, on all aspects. They have allotted us local staff that uh, we uh, or, for the everyday kind of activities of the institution. So, and we work together. We call ourselves the IDM Zanzibar family and all hands are on deck for uh, this institution. Absolutely. And ma'am, how has been the response from students? You just mentioned that it is already brimming of students. Like, and what is the like national composition so far? Like how many, what is the percentage of students from India and other nations? So we are 100 plus students right now across two cohorts, uh, both UG and PG. From Indian viewpoint, it's a small campus uh, for sure. Uh, but I think for something that's uh, so far from what we are, what we've been used to, it's still remarkable. In terms of composition, around 50% of our students are Indians from India. We have a handful of Indian diaspora from various parts of the world. And the rest of the students are African. Uh, this uh, up to now, we have representation from uh, Zambia, Kenya, mainland Tanzania and uh, Zanzibar. So three African countries, we have representation over here. We are expecting that uh, several more will come in, um, in in the coming academic year. And ma'am, is there some sort of like awareness about the campus going on in terms of like other African nation where IT uh, Zanzibar campus is approaching them to make them aware of the existence of this institute? 
Yeah, you ask a very good question. Uh, you know, uh, I often say that when you go to India, any part of India, if you say I'm from IIT or IIT Madras, they know what it is and what yeah. it means and stuff like that. But across Africa, um, what we've seen is that it's not it's not so widespread the awareness about us. So we've been doing every possibility of engagement to spread this awareness um, wherever we get even, uh, uh, you know, like a little bit of foot in the door uh, we go over. Um, we travel. I, my, I was in Uganda in East Africa last week, in fact, and uh, we, we received so warmly whenever we go to these other countries. We have been to Zambia. Our team has been to Ethiopia and uh, Kenya as well. So some part of the awareness building is through uh, these uh, in-person uh, visits that we do um, to the places but we also do lots we do webinars um, frequently for uh, you know just to talk about student applications and stuff like that we recently conducted a series of tutoring type of classes we have a screening test as an application process and our own um, students from uh, Chennai ran uh, tutoring classes that also builds wow. awareness little bit on social media. Um, we have a lot of support from the high, Indian High Commission Pan Africa, including a lot from the Indian High Commissioner here in Tanzania. He arranges a lot of programs and invites IITM, IITM Zanzibar to participate. Um, in fact, he had a meeting with his Excellency, uh, she they had a meeting with African ambassadors to Tanzania. So we had a chance to meet with ambassadors, um, African ambassadors from other countries and talk a little bit about what we are, who we are, what we can do for uh, their people and stuff like that. You know, we are not just about, uh, you know, for young people for taking degrees. We do a lot more. We do research, we do consultancy, we do professional skilling programs. There's a lot of ways in which we can contribute um, to these countries and our geographic presence so close by in East Africa is something that um, they can leverage. So we have slowly but surely uh, we, we've been um, involved in various you know, type of activities like this. I'm sure. And ma'am, this year, this like coming academic year, is there a plan of expansion in terms of like courses? Yeah, we do have this plan uh, we're working on at the undergraduate level. Uh, we started, as you may know, with data science and AI because it's the most popular uh, subject that young people want to study. Uh, this year, we're planning to launch a chemical and process engineering program as well uh, because of the, you know, the surfeit of natural resources um, in Africa, particularly in uh, East Africa and how uh, this type of program may really benefit from that viewpoint. Um, we already introduced an Ocean Structures Master's program in addition to the Data Science and AI last year. And we are in conversations about master's, very niche kind of master's program, probably in sustainable infrastructure, definitely in energy, chemical uh, type of engineering aspects. Those are a little more um, at the uh, planning stage, but at the undergraduate level, a chemical and process engineering will most likely launch in a few weeks, uh, if not a month's time from now. Well, that'll be great, Manda. And how is the faculty composition? How challenging is it to get like good faculty? See, IIT Madras is known for the faculty it has. So uh, what about uh, the Zanzibar campus? And if the professors in IIT Madras are also helping in terms of taking online classes, virtually teaching students, yeah, I've, you've hit the nail on the head. You know, what is known in media is our less than 1% student selection rate, right? But our faculty selection rates are also very low. Uh, faculty selection is extremely competitive uh, at IIT Madras and all the IITs. And, you know, that is the reason why uh, till date we are maintaining the type of academic rigor that we are uh, known for. Um, over here, the degrees are IIT Madras degrees. So obviously it's incumbent upon us to maintain the uh, quality of teaching you know, the, the way in which IIT faculty approach teaching is also quite innovative. It's different. It's, it's extremely modern. And, 
it's 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 the most relevant for the current uh, needs of the world so yeah that is a challenge but you know it's um, it's been a, that journey has also been wonderful for us we have excellent assistant professors that have come with really good pedigrees um, phd's from good Uh, departments of across india from various iits postdocs from abroad high top institutions abroad um we also recently uh, got a kenyan uh, faculty member to join us um who also speaks the local language oh. which is uh, which is kiswahili and that is also nice and like you rightly said madam uh, we have a Uh, excellent support from the uh, IIT Madras main campus with faculty not just online they actually come here for senior members top top teachers have come here to Zanzibar stayed for a semester taught their course sat down with these young students and i i must say they've enjoyed it too because we don't get this type of diversity this little bit smaller class sizes mm. very intimate a uh, small campus kind of feel um, and from a teacher uh, standpoint you know we we really enjoy it and i know that my colleagues that have come have um, taken that very positive feeling away in this semester i must tell you that we have faculty like this from iit bombay also uh, come to us um, oh, for short short term for teaching and it's uh, you know the the academic environment that we are building i'm very proud uh, it's a really erudite um faculty with uh, so much of interest in an activity like this uh, that they're willing to take up the challenge of living here for a semester training these young people um supporting us mentoring the assistant professors the young professors that are here and building out um, the educational aspects of this campus uh since yours is like the pioneer institute which has actually stepped out of the geographical boundaries of the country and established a campus right so how do you see it zanzibar showing a way to other iits and all other higher education institutions in india in terms of internationalization of education which is one of the core aim of nep ma yeah so i know that uh, you nep say, said that internationalization of uh, indian higher education the time has come for that um and you know having studied the policy uh, because we we did this in in a sense strategically lot of sort of positive things came together for iit madras in order to do this but it's also been a mindfully done um, initiative for us um and the freedom that each institution has uh, in in terms of any any enablements to carve out why we want to do this how we want to do do this uh, if at all and um, you know the challenges that we are likely to face has been very good i think for me i would probably say this on a personal note um for an institution of national importance like us which which enjoys really good brand value across the world the reason to do this um should be uh, really with a long term global uh, type of lens that we are looking to train global citizens um that we, we are looking at a, a situation where the core of our excellence you know uh, which is essentially if you wanted to list on the fingers of one hand the academic rigor of our programs and like you rightly said the quality of our faculty and how mindful we are in uh, faculty selection and the campus experience that we provide to the students you know three or four aspects like this of course the innovation entrepreneurial mindset that we are building in recent times for the past decade or so in our students that culture of of uh, exploration this sort of thing should be brought into an offshore campus uh, of this sort but more importantly the reason to do this um, should be that we genuinely want to contribute to the local uh, or, or surrounding economies over here and to the world in a bigger more meaningful way than we can by just uh, being back home and building out the strength of our brand further 
Absolutely. And my last question to you, ma'am, you are the first women heading any IIT right now. On that front, uh, like, how do you see opportunities for girls there at IIT Zanzibar campus? Uh, thank you. Uh, I'm often asked this question. Um, you know, uh, we have around 30-35% of, uh, in the first year it was little more, but now it's 30% of our uh, student population is women. And I, and we didn't do, uh, you know, we didn't set aside any seats or anything like that. So I'm I'm so happy that this has happened. And of course, we are working closely with these women students to make sure that the aspirational um, careers that they go for is commensurate with the type of talent that they have. Um, I, I think it, I don't know about me personally, but I think the world is uh, definitely changing, changing for the better. Uh, we are all so much more mindful of, of ensuring that um, there is there is um, equity um, among for both men and women in, in terms of uh, educational and career uh, opportunities. Um, there's also the aspect of inclusivity and that some of it happens naturally when there are larger numbers of the uh, minority group in the class, but a little bit beyond that. So I, I think it's it's meaningful. It's been lovely over here. I, I hear the, the Minister of Education is, an, is a lady and almost all our staff are women. I think, yeah, barring, barring the drivers, all the local staff here um, that run the institute, the, the registrar, the finance manager, the human resources, the assistant, everybody is, uh, you know, a woman and uh, that works for us. In fact, our hostel matron is also, uh, which is equivalent of what we call warden in India. It's also a woman and people are seeing this. You don't have to tell them or point some of these out that we are standing tall um, and, and really holding our own. And, and I feel very confident that our students see this. We have some remarkable young women in our program. I push them a little bit sometimes and you know I can share with you one of the articles that a uh, couple of uh, our young women students wrote. You can see some of the, I myself awesome. interviewed them one time and wrote something about, you should see the way they speak, where they hold themselves, the way they write, etc. And I, I'm filled with a lot of hope for uh, their future. Of course, our, uh, our male students are also really excellent and they've done really well. You know, our master's batch, our pioneering master's batch is going to graduate in a month, uh, you know, in, in, in the first week of July. All of them have secured um, excellent uh, placements. So I'm very proud of all of them, but maybe a little bit extra of the women students. And I think they're seeing our everyday operation and uh, getting inspired and, and feeling feeling good about themselves. Uh, you just mentioned about placements, ma'am. So did this placement drive happen there only or like along with the students in India? How did it happen? Where exactly so it was, they're joining? It was mostly... So mostly we drove it from here. Uh, some of it was, uh, some of the companies came here, a couple of them came here to this campus. Classes, small graduating classes, um, 16 uh, at this point of time. So some companies came here and uh, locally they've been in Dar es Salaam, which is the nearest big city. Uh, they've been hired at a very good uh, with the, at a very good company. Some of them were online uh, tech companies from India um, have employed some of our students. Um, one of our students got into a top-notch PhD program uh, as well, which is what she wanted after her master's. So it's across the world. And, you know, when we started it, we were, we, we wanted this to be something that places people around the world and in a small measure, that's how it has uh, shaped up. So although we have Indian students, some of them have been employed here in Tanzania. So they'll be working in Tanzania for at least the initial part of their careers, which is exciting. Um, some of them are going abroad for PhD to Australia and so on. So that's sort of how it's looking at this small class. But I'm hoping. 
fruitful again that is going to expand out and be truly global. We call ourselves an international institution. That means it should be international in all respects, including um, the where our students get placed. So that's Absolutely. where we are right. Uh, thank you so much, ma'am, for having this insightful conversation with me and wish you all the very best for the upcoming batch. Thank you so much. Need all the best wishes from you all. It's been a pleasure interacting with you. Have a good afternoon. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am.